Um, so we all know how architects work. Uh, they work in millimetres, which presents our first problem. And uh, without any relevant X, Y coordinates or Z values. So, um, so I'm going to talk about how these um, two programs can better communicate with each other. So which uh, will create a better workflow between the e engineers, architects and surveyors. So it's quite a simple um, presentation. Um, going from 12D to Archicad using three simple steps and then um, and that's uh, using the IFC output and that'll um, we'll be able to import that into Archicad in millimetre relevant coordinates so they're essentially working in the right um, location and then um, to do their building designs and then um, we'll come back the other way and show how we can bring their buildings um, back into 12D, and that's using the FBX import. Uh, so how long will it take? Uh, the IFC is uh, pretty instantaneous, um, but coming back the other way, there's a couple of um, processes um, that we'll have to do. So, but once you set up the Helmet FBX files, we have to set up two of them, but once I set up, that'll take five to 10 minutes, but once it's set up, it's a couple of minute process, so it's pretty quick to, um, take information both ways. Right, so first step, um, export the IFC file from 12D. So I'll just say something real brief about this uh, site. So this is a multi-cultural complex in New Zealand and it's a concept design that we were doing for funding. Uh, so on the site there's proposed to be four buildings, a museum, a food hall, meeting place and a toilet block. And there's also a um, car park on the site and so the site's quite sloping um, and quite a lot of retainings required so it's much more efficient to complete the earthworks design in 12D where we've got we, we can work out proper quantities and everything um, so um, the IFC file is a much better way to um, bring data into ARCHICAD in the past they'd uh, maybe bring a point file in and um, it never had proper break lines or anything, so um, this is uh, far superior. And um, the data that you can output, you can either do the natural surface um, if that's all they want, or you can output the design surface, um, yeah, with all the proper triangulated data. Uh, so that's just file data output, IFC, IFC Express Writer. Many of you may have used this before. Uh, so just a side note, if you're exporting a super tin, uh, you will need to create a single tin of it because um, IFCs can't, out, can't output a super tin yet. Uh, so just export the triangles of the super tin to a CAD file and then re-import them back in and create a tin of it and then output that as an IFC file. So step two um, is to import that IFC file into ARCHICAD. And that's, um, this is the menu you'll see in ARCHICAD, File, File Special, Merge. So you just select your IFC file and you paste it at 0, 0, 0. Uh, so the way ARCHICAD works is um, they create a mesh, um, so, which is like a solid mass. So if you see the um, blue line on the screen capture, that's like the top of their solid mesh. And so what they do is they trim their mesh to our imported IFC object. And so you can see that's what's happened there. Uh, and the mesh can then, uh, once that's happened, they can then manipulate the mesh um, as much as they require, i.e. to model in their foundations. And so the great thing with this is that uh, you can complete this process over and over because the... Um, the data is in the correct lo location in ARCHICAD. Um, so as the design develops or um, as uh, the architect requires more changes, you can uh, quickly and efficiently go and amend the earthworks plan and then re-export that data and they can have it straight away. Um, so in this particular design here, I was asked to create a flat pad and so I did that output that data, and then uh, once they started designing their buildings, they realised that the 
um, pad needed to be bigger, so just went and adjusted that, output it again, and then they had the updated um, data. And uh, so they continued working on their buildings while I continued working on the car park. And once I'd finished that, output that. Um, so you can see how there's a better workflow between the uh, engineers and architects. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, just before I go into this one, the way the architects used to import the data, they'd, they'd get that data um, and it was pretty original because it was a point file and then they would, um, you know, rotate the data, move the data and move it up and down so it was um, quite um, a process to do it. So this is much better having it in the right millimetre relevant coordinates. Um, and then the last step is to export the CAD 2D, 2D strings and import them into ArchiCAD. So it's pretty straightforward. Whatever CAD string lines they need, um, you just output them for them. And then what they do is they import those CAD 2D string lines into ArchiCAD at 0, 0,0. Um, so that'll be in the same place as the IFC file. And for the architect to create what they call surface mesh, which is hatching, or like hatching, uh, for areas of visualis visualisation in ArchiCAD. So uh, this is just uh, the finished product, I guess, the, with the museum on the left-hand side and the food hall on the right-hand side. Uh, so that's um, designed um, right in the right coordinates um, on top of our surface. And that's the overview of the site with the Mirai on the far left, the Dunny block behind, the uh, food hall and the museum on the right. And so that's an um, a image of the car park area. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, come back the other way and bring um, data back or the buildings back into 12D. So the first step would be to um, output some string lines. Um, and so the Archi ArchiCAD user can output the data in metres. And, um, and this will import into 12D in the um, right location. I don't know how many people have uh, imported stuff from ar ar architects and can be pretty painful. So it's great to have it come in the right location. Um, however, because the way Archi ArchiCAD works, they have 2D string lines and we'll just need to assign elevations. But once I've got those elevations, all the buildings are in the right places and they've already got the surface that we originally put out. Uh, so everything's kind of ready to go for them to set out on site. Uh, so this particular example shows the building pad strings that were output um, from the architect. Uh, so now the second um, step is to output a 3DS file from ArchiCAD. So that's a 3D studio object file, and then we'll need to convert that to an FBX file. So this is the menu that you'll see in um, ArchiCAD for that. And so the first option is the one that we um, used in this instant. And so the important thing to remember is when you're outputting this data, you need to um, have, you need to output it in the same drawing units every time you do it. Otherwise, um, the next step where we set up our Helmet 3D file, it won't work properly. So uh, always remember to output the uh, in the same units. And the second uh, option that they have there, you can um, select element element types, and um, and then that'll uh, enable you to write out the ArchiCAD texture information. So the way Archi ArchiCAD works is. Uh, they either select colours for their buildings or they select textures. Um, so they have all the uh, Resine and Dulux colours for their buildings, but sometimes they have textures, which is like the bricks and stuff like that. And so uh, what you can do in um, 12D is you can set up a texture file that relates to all the colours. So when their buildings come out um, into 12D, they'll appear with all the right textures and colours on them. Um, and when they output this data, um, they can either output um, just the roof or just the walls or just the floor or whatever, or they can output the whole building or they can output everything on the whole site. Um, and so once that 3DS file is output, you need to convert it to an FBX 
um, file, and so you can use something like Autodesk FBX Converter. Um, so the last step, um, bringing the buildings in, is to import the FBX file and helmet it to the um, on site. So you'll see here um, that is the FBX file that's been imported. And so this actually comes in as a tri-mesh, and you can see it's got different colours there associated with it. Um, but as you'll see, it's a plan view, and um, so the building's actually not in the right orientation, it's on its side. Um, so then the Marae, the museum, and the bunny block. Um, so we turn all those on in one view. Um, so they're in different um, layers or different models. And so all the buildings are relevant to each other in height and location. Um, however, they just need to be orientated in the right direction. So we've set up, um, with the help of Dylan, um, a user in our user library. Uh, this is a um, flip Archicad data, Helmet 3D. And so you can pretty much copy this same thing or get the file from Dylan. Um, and <laughs> so, so anyway, um, because it's in your user library, um, any building that you bring in in, in this way, uh, you can just uh, run this quick helmet file and the buildings will be orientated in the correct direction. So the next, oh, so a little side note, if the data disappears, uh, you may need to calc the view extents. Took me ages to figure that out. Um, and then, so the so the buildings are now around the in the the right um, orientation. Now they have to be moved to the um, right location on the site. Uh, so you can notice there that we've got that CAD uh, strings file um, there that we're using as um, a base. Um, so we're we've set up a Helmet 3D file, and so you can set this up um, once for your job. So if you've got a large job where you're bringing in lots and lots of buildings, uh, you can just set up this 3D helmet um, once, and then, and then it, only, it only takes five minutes to set up, and then you just have to run it every time you bring in a new building or a part of the building. And then you... And so you can just complete that process over and over. So then you turn on, in your perspective view, um, the building tri-meshes, and, and then just go crazy with your visualisation. Uh, so I'll just quickly show you another example here. This is just a simple site, uh, one that we designed in 12D and output to our architects. So it's in Botany Wellington. And um, so the architect... Um, design the um, building in the right location um, and so then what we did was we got that building and his retaining walls and his planter boxes and his um, handrails and we imported them back into 12D and put a few trees there. Um, so that's what the inside of the building or the tri-mesh looks like. So you can see the furniture comes through with its colours I'm not sure if that's useful, but it's there. <laughs> um, and so this is the section through the building. Um, so you can see the foundations come through and you can see how it um, works relative to the site. Um, so this um, could be useful for planning, for visualising uh, your design. Quality control is really important. Um, especially making sure that, because we're doing the, um, the design, so we know that, or the earthworks design, so we know that um, the building that's been designed is actually going to fit properly on the site. Um, and then survey set out and even marketing. So um, this has been really useful for us. Um, it helped our workflow between uh, the engineers, architects and surveyors and we believe it gives a better quality um, uh, product to the client. So anyway, if you'd like a copy of the step-by-step -step guide of the presentation, feel free to download it off our webpage. It's up there now, uh, coco.co.nz and just go to the civil section. Thanks. <laughs>